G'day, a couple of years ago I made a video on my channel about installing a noise suppressor on the Sunbeam M6910, these things. And you know, a lot of people were asking how to do it. Uh, at the time that was kind of just a demonstration video and I'm a repairer so this is my job. It's not something that is worth money, like I couldn't do it and, and make any kind of profit doing it. so. It was more of a, a gimmicky thing to try, so I never really followed it up. But I did it again on this one. I figured I'd show people how I did it, and you can have a go of it um, if you want. So here it is installed. It is slightly different to the previous video. Um, in this one, the suppression unit is off a DeLonghi machine. On the other one was a from an EM7000 Sunbeam. They're the same thing. There's several other companies who make them, they all achieve the same purpose. Um, it's, it's basically the fitment um, and how it's going to fit in this, this area. This one's actually yeah, really nice. It's tight, but it fits in there. Probably fits better than the, the old Sunbeam one, actually. But anyway, it's that. A new tube in there, running down to the fitting on the thermocoil in there. And that these are the parts. So this is the suppressor, that's the part number from DeLonghi. The only thing with DeLonghi, for whatever reason, the O-rings they use on their tubes are fractionally bigger than the standard. You cannot use a normal um, BS007 O-ring, like this, the orange one here, um, that is used on basically every other machine. You have to use DeLonghi's O-ring, and that 55 number is the part number for that O-ring. I'd suggest getting the Sunbeam one or Jura, so Jura, however you want to say it, J-U-R-A, the automatic coffee machines. They also employ these in the same you know, in the same form factor, and you can use those, and they will take a standard BS007 O-ring there. So the you also need an O-ring for the the threaded fitting to fit down onto the pump, uh, which is that one there. Those are the dimensions. The thickness. You could do anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8, really, and it will work fine. Also recommend, probably as a backup, using a bit of thread tape or some um, thread sealant on that as well, just in case. So basically, you remove your parts. That's the old copper line, and that's the old fitting from the, the top of the, the priming valve there. So you take that out, basically screw that down, now getting it oriented to actually point properly out this way is, I, I got lucky in this case, it, it tightened up nice. You can rotate the outlet of your pump here, but that will, and that will give you a bit of uh, ability to change that angle. But then you have to make sure the outlet of your priming valve is not obstructed. So you could move it out anywhere sort of to here, um, sort of yeah, in line with the solenoid here. And then you'd still be able to run your, your tube down down to the T there. So you'd have to just play around with that. I'd recommend do not take this off. Do not take the priming valve off your pump um, to try to, to refit it. There's a high chance you'll snap the thread. Um, they just they used a very tough sealant and it's 50-50 whether it comes out or if you snap it. If you snap it, then you're stuffed. You're going to have to buy a new priming valve, which is not out of the question, but it's going to, you know, you're going to have to spend more money and, and fiddle with it even more. Anyway, oh yeah, the other part, sorry, we're distracted. This is going to be the problem where you're going to get this. Um, maybe I should have started with this, but this is the, the new um, Teflon nylon, I can't remember what it's made of, tube with the, the O-ring clip fitting here and then the compression fitting here. The best source for these will be a Seiko automatic coffee machine. Um, in particular the, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember, the Encanto. The Encanto line Seiko machines. This is the line that runs from the steam boiler up to the steam tap. That's this exact line and this will work. Um, but a lot of Seikos use a similar setup. Um, I can't think of any machine off the top of my head that, that will use this tube, and, and this is kind of what you will need. 
So you're going to have to either find someone selling a new tube as a spare part, which is unlikely, or you'll have to salvage one out of a broken machine. It's probably going to be the best chance. Because you'll see, that's the, the old fitting, for example. And the thread is the same. It all works. Oh, sorry. Let me prop this up here. It's just a compression fitting. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does work and it will not leak. Um, yep, they just fit together like so. Yeah, the other thing, sorry, you'll need is a the clip, the hose clip, um, to fix this into the suppressor there. These, again, if you can pick up your Seiko machine, just salvage a clip out of that and use it. Um, you can buy those online relatively easily, but you know, they're used in so many different machines that you shouldn't have any problem getting a broken machine and, and using the clip out of it. Sorry, I forgot to get it out. Just to show you what they are, these things. I've got a big bag of them here. Anyway. That's about it. Um, standard safety rules apply. Do all of this with the machine off and unplugged. If this machine is turned off at the switch up here but left plugged in, you'll still have 240 volts on all of your connectors and you will get hit by it. I've done it before on the steam pumps. Been distracted, come back, forgot I haven't unplugged it, go to change the pump and yeah, not fun. Anyway, I'll give you a demonstration of how this one sounds. I'm just using an empty dual wall basket in this case. So you're under pressure there and you know that's very tolerable. Once it's got all its covers and everything on it, you're barely going to hear that. There's no leaks up there. It's all looking good. So yeah, that's the job. If you want to have a go at it, you know, it does make the machine a lot more pleasant to use. And um, yeah, the, the one advantage of the AM7000 when it came out was it was so much quieter than these old things. Um, the, the amount of metal and, and copper in these is still, you know, that's great. You won't see that anymore, particularly the, the very new sunbeams as of filming this in 2022. They're just very plasticky, breaking a lot. Anyway, there it is. Have a go. Any questions, just post them down below and I'll, I'll try to answer them um, as best I can. All right, thanks. Bye.